to figure out what's going on in total internal reflection, we want to write the reflection coefficient in a different form. So we want to define R T E in this form, E to the minus J alpha over E to the plus J alpha. Because, here's the reason, if we think about what that really means, that's really telling you that the ER field is this thing, e to the minus j alpha over e to the plus j alpha times the incident field. So ER is e incident, which is e to the j kz minus omega t i hat. If we imagine a plane wave polarized along x and moving in z. So the directions won't matter. We can call it whatever we want. So this is e to the minus j alpha divided by e to the j alpha is e to the minus 2j alpha, and we can stick it in there. So it's e i e to the j k z minus omega t minus 2 alpha i hat. So what you see as we do this, because it leads to a phase shift Um, phi T E equal to minus 2 alpha. So if it makes sense to write it that way, and if we could figure out if alpha is something sensible, that means that what's happening in this region is that the phase is changing. Okay? So let's see if we write it that way, if anything good happens. Well, it looks pretty useless. It's just a complex exponential. But we need to start sort of manipulating it and see if we can get it into a useful form. So what you'd probably apply is Euler. And you'd say that's equal to the cosine of minus alpha uh, plus j times the sine of minus alpha. And this is equal to the cosine of alpha plus j times the sine of alpha. No approximations there. And then it's very useful to memorize the difference between cosine and sine in terms of their symmetry. Right? Cosine is symmetric around 0. So the cosine of minus alpha is equal to the cosine of alpha. So whenever you're doing derivations, you could always just say cosine minus x is cosine x. And if you see a minus in the sine, sine's uh, anti-symmetric, so you've got to pull the minus sine out. So that's minus j sine alpha. And in the bottom, you don't have to do anything. Cosine alpha plus j sine alpha. Okay. So that's the way you could write our TE. And maybe now you can start to see why we did it this way. This is starting to look like the form of uh, our TE from Fresnel's equations. In fact, we could say our TE equals, and it was cosine theta i. And then it was uh, minus the square root of n squared minus sine squared theta. But we're just talking about the case uh, where we're in total internal reflection, the case where it does become imaginary, that square root. So we're going to go ahead and do what we did before, which is flip it around and pull out a j. Right? So it's minus j times the square root of sine squared theta i minus n squared. Because we are at large angles where the sine squared theta i will be bigger than the n squared. So this thing will stay real, and we've made it imaginary there. We just pulled out a negative 1. And then we'll do the same thing on the bottom, cosine plus, plus j times the square root of sine squared theta i minus n squared. And then you can see the other reason we chose this form is it looks very much like it matches. From here, we can say that the cosine of alpha equals the cosine of uh, theta i. And let's see, we can say that the sine of alpha equals uh, minus j equals the square root of sine squared theta i minus n squared. Okay. So in that sense, the way, the way to get alpha is to take the uh, uh, tangent 
to use all the information, right? You wouldn't want to say, oh, does alpha equal theta i? Well, no, it's not, not quite that simple. It does depend on the index. So you have to bring uh, both equations in, and you find that tangent of alpha equals the square root of sine squared theta i minus n squared over uh, cosine theta i, like that. And then if you want to go all the way to the phase, you remember that the phase was minus 2 times alpha. So finally, you get that the phase shift of the TE light in the total internal reflected region at, at large angles is equal to minus 2 times the inverse tangent of the square root of sine squared theta i minus n squared over cosine theta i. And there's the phase shift. But as you know, when you're thinking about polarization, it's really the relative phase shift of the two components. So we have TE, now we need to do TM.